Hello friends, how's everybody doing? This was another request from a longtime viewer, Franco. Hey Brian, talk about some of the later Monkeys albums. They, the Monkeys, as a name, uh, they issued two albums in 1969. Instant Replay and The Monkeys Present. But I decided to do The Monkeys Present this is just my opinion. I think it's the better of the two. Now, by this point, Peter had left the group. He stuck around for the television special, 33 and a Third Revolutions Per Monkey, and then he was out of there. The first album issued was Instant Replay in the wake of Peter's departure. The second album was titled the, the Monkeys Present, or to be more precise, The Monkeys Present, Mickey, David, and Michael. This is the Rhino Deluxe Collector's Edition, everything there. Uh, comes with a nice informative booklet. You get a 45 RPM single of, of Mickey's song, Mommy and Daddy, and Mike's song, Good, Clean, Fun, and Alternate Mixes, and a total of three discs. The album, plus bonus songs, and two discs of, of bonus and outtakes. All of the discs are filled to the CD maximum limit of 80 minutes, so you get a lot of good stuff here. I, um, Rhino knows how to do these packages, and I wish they would not make them limited editions. I don't think you could find this one anymore. This one came out in uh, 2013. Now, originally, they had announced that there was going to be a double album. This was in late 68, around the time Head came out, the movie Head came out, that there was going to be a double album where all four of the monkeys would have an album side to explore whatever songs, sounds they wanted to. Like one side would be devoted to Mike, one side would be devoted to Peter, one side would be devoted to Davey, one side would be devoted to Mickey. The idea was they would have the ability to explore all of their individual musical ideas under the Monkees banner. Now, keep in mind, the Monkees were the cast of a television show. They weren't a band that was manufactured for a television series. They were the cast of a television show, much like the cast of Glee. They were not a real Glee club, much like the cast of Star Trek. They were not real astronauts and aliens. But somehow, because of Mike Nesmith and Peter Tork, Mike Nesmith wanted to write and Peter wanted to play, uh, they wrestled control from Don Kirshner and Bob Rafelson and Bert Schneider, sort of agreed as well, hey, you guys are the ones out there selling this and singing these songs, maybe you guys should perform as a band. They became a band. The Monkees Present was eventually not released as a double album and was put together by Cold Gems music supervisor Brendan Cahill, I think I pronounced the name correctly, and dwarfed down to a single album that really has no rhyme, reason, concept, or flow. Now, I do think, as an album, individually, you got some great songs here. Mickey Dolan's finally came into, he really came into his own as a songwriter. You have the opening truck, Little Girl, bye-bye baby bye-bye and of course the biting social commentary of mommy and daddy cold gems by this time gave them creative control or they basically said you're on your own boys good luck so they really didn't care so back during the heyday when the television show first premiered to release a song like mommy and daddy with the biting social commentary on there Ask your mommy and daddy, what are these little yellow pills and stuff like that? It would have been axed immediately. But here, yeah, they got away with it. Or Mickey got away with it. And Davey, in collaboration with a friend of Mike Nesmith's, Bill Chadwick, he was writing some very good songs. His style was Broadway pop, is what he called it. M Mickey's style was more sort of like psychedelia, 
mixed with a bit of R&B and blues. Mike was country rock and sometimes 1920s ragtime big band is where he was. But Davey wrote some of his best songs on here with Bill Chadwick, If I Knew, and you know, um, French song are definitely standouts. Mike was being Mike. Good Clean Fun, I think, is a great country rocker, but the anthem on this album, which was started when Peter was still in the band, is Listen to the Band. Great song, great anthem. And there's also two Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart leftovers from 1966 that Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart went in and added some additional overdubs to. So, Looking for the Good Times and the novelty song, Ladies Aid Society, not one of Boyce and Hart's best in my opinion. Ladies Aid Society sounds like a song Herman's Hermits would do. So really, you have an album here that sounds like what it is, three individuals. Now a lot of people, especially us Beatle maniacs, a lot of people run with John's assertion that the White Album was essentially four, uh, four solo artists. I don't agree with that because honestly if that's the case I think the Beatles were a lot closer musically than they would lead us to believe because it sounds like a band album. This sounds like you could tell there was like no interaction between any of them. Uh, Mike submitted his songs for the album. Davey submitted his songs for the album. Mickey submitted his songs, their tapes. And it was up to Brendan Cahill to, to put together an album. The double album, no longer feasible. The Monkees show was still successful. The two seasons were in syndication at this point. It was, they were shown on CBS with, in Saturday mornings at this point. And Mike, after this album came out, he bought himself out of his contract. The bonus stuff on here, I'm happy that we got a great recording of Mickey's uh, song Steam Engine, which was written by Chip Douglas and produced by Chip Douglas. A lot of stuff on here. It's got the, the Monkees Present radio spot. And an alternate version of, of Mickey's song Mommy and Daddy, which the lyrics are even more explicit. So there's a lot of great stuff on here. Uh, and, and, and somebody would ask, why would the Monkees have all these outtakes? Well, that's because you had three artists, plus Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart, working in various studios under the banner, The Monkees. So that's basically it. But the Monkees television series was getting some renewed interest being in syndication on CBS for Saturday mornings. And they would dub in some of the new songs. I know Steam Engine, which was not on the album, was dubbed in to Monkeys on Tour, which was the, the, the season finale of, of season one. But it wasn't generating album sales. These albums have gained recognition amongst Monkeys fans nowadays. But... The Monkees Present is a, is a good album of individual songs. Individual songs. You could appreciate the songs on their individual merit. As far as a cohesive flow, like I said when I talked about more of the Monkees, say what you want about Don Kirshner, he, knew, he gave the album a flow. And even Chip Douglas, when they became a quote-unquote band, Headquarters and Pisces Aquarius have a flow to them. Uh, this, this album and Instant Replay, the one that came before, they don't have a flow. But the individual songs are good. So I appreciate it for the individual songs. Interesting to see what it, it would have been if there was somebody who could have put it together where it all flowed a certain way. That's my take. Give me some of your thoughts, and please leave me some comments about them. And thank you so much. And until we meet again.